key things to uh, ask for in the history, hobbies, sports, what the patient does for a living, uh, weight bearing, that's an important one. Uh, it's part of the uh, imaging criteria uh, uh, that we'll review later. Um, and then some of these other um, uh, questions that we've reviewed very similar to the, to the other um, joints. Physical exam, look, feel, move, special test. So starting with inspection, uh, looking for deformity, skin changes, ecchymosis, abrasions, or lacerations over the ankle. Uh, so here's just an example of ecchymosis and uh, effusion in the ankle. Ankles can get some nasty bruises too. Yeah, yeah. Like super swollen. Really, and patients are so concerned about the bruise, right? Yeah. They're yeah. like, oh my gosh, look how terrible it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Or when the bruise moves down to their foot. Oh, like, oh yeah. my gosh, what's going on? That's a, that's a pro gravity. tip is yeah. to tell your patient, yeah. right? Like this yeah. will go down. Yeah. It's okay. It doesn't mean it's getting worse. Like yeah. it will fall as yeah. time goes. Yeah, on. totally. Especially the following day, like when it's yes. even more bruised. So yeah. letting them know beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't get Come too back. startled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the other, the other um, uh, how I also incorporate that is uh, sometimes you can't necessarily test for ligamentous laxity in the acute setting. Mm -hmm. But if the patient is in severe pain, there's a lot of bruising already and a lot of swelling, then those generally can be higher grade um, mm -hmm. uh, ligament injuries. So Achilles tendon rupture here, you can notice the uh, um, swelling of the left ankle. Uh, make sure to palpate along the base of the fifth metatarsal and the entire course of the fibula, as well as the other anatomic landmarks we reviewed earlier. A uh, few specific uh, areas that we want to be really intentional about, the lateral malleolus and the medial malleolus, so the distal six centimeters of the fibula and the tibia, uh, as well as the divicular and base of uh, the fifth metatarsal. Here's a typical range of motion for the ankle and neurovascular exam very similar to uh, the knee. One call out is proximal fibular fractures can be associated with common perineal injuries. So assessing that first web space of the foot, the dorsum of the foot um, for both the deep perineal and superficial perineal um, nerves. In terms of provocative tests, uh, the anterior drawer, tailor tilt and eversion stress tests um, assess for different ligaments uh, within the ankle. Uh, is this something you guys commonly do? I, don't. I don't, to be honest with you. Maybe I should be doing this, but I usually don't. And I think it's because patients don't usually like it when you do this to an ankle that's really swollen and really uncomfortable. Yeah, they're not going to tolerate yeah, it. Yeah, they're going to kick you with the unaffected leg and be like, get out of here. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, same here. Uh, I think, uh, especially in the Q setting, the swelling and the muscle spasm also just makes it less reliable and harder to do for the patient. So this really just highlights for me the importance of setting a follow-up for the patient. Totally. Uh, since we can't get a great exam, yeah. uh, it's important that somebody else examines the patient, whether they come back to the urgent care clinic or to their primary care provider. Synesmotic injuries, so the squeeze test, uh, as pictured here, you're applying pressure to the uh, interosseous membrane and seeing whether there's pain around uh, the distal part, like over the synesmosis. This is something that I do with every yes. angle. Yes, yeah. yeah. This one I definitely always do. So for assessing the Achilles tendon, there's the Thompson's test. And we have the patient lie either uh, prone uh, with their knee extended or flexed at 90 degrees and squeezing the gastrox to see whether the ankle plantar flexes. Roger, in fact, it would be great if you could demo some of these provocative tests for us. How does that sound? Sounds great. Let's do it. Let's do it. The anterior drawer test uh, assesses for ATFL uh, injury, so in a setting of ankle sprains. And to perform that, we just stabilize the uh, tibia and fibula against the exam table, cup the patient's heel, have it slightly, have their foot slightly plantar flexed, and then pull back to assess for laxity. Similar to other injuries, we can uh, assess the other side as well. The synesmotic squeeze test uh, assesses for high ankle sprains or injuries to the synesmosis. It's a pretty simple test. You're just compressing the tibia and fibula together, uh, generally in this area in the middle of the calf, and asking the patient for uh, whether they have any pain along the leg. The final test is the Thompson test uh, for patients who are um, uh, for patients whose history are suggestive of Achilles tendon rupture. For that, we ask the patient to lay on their belly and we can either have the leg fully extended or at 90 degrees and we would just squeeze the gastrox and look for plantar flexion of the foot. So this indicates a normal, healthy 
Achilles tendon, uh, if it were ruptured, um, then the foot would not be moving. This can also be done with the leg in extension. So to summarize, again, here's a physical exam template that we can use for ankle injuries. Skin is intact without breaks, edema or ecchymosis, no bony deformities on palpation, non-tender to palpation of the bony prominences, specifically noting no tenderness over the lateral medial malleoli, the base of the fifth metatarsal and the navicular bones. Uh, and then also specifically noting no tenderness over the knee, including the proximal fibula. Uh, in terms of range, uh, ankle inversion, eversion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion with no pain, and neurovascularly, 2 plus DP and PT pulses, sensation tactile light touch over the first web space, dorsum, and sole of the foot. Uh, strength uh, for the range of motion, and then if there's a fracture, also documenting that the compartments are soft. Uh, the provocative test for the key uh, anatomic structures, synosmosis is the squeeze test, ATFL, anterior drawer test, and for the Achilles tendon, uh, the Thompson's dex. The Ottawa ankle rule, so similar to the Ottawa knee rule, uh, helps risk stratify patients, uh, especially for the ultra low risk patients. So if patients don't have any tenderness over the distal six centimeters of the lateral and medial malleoli, no tenderness over the base of the fifth, no tenderness over the navicular bone, and they're able to bear weight, take at least four steps, then those patients are at very low risk of having an ankle fracture. Uh, so the Ottawa ankle rule is useful in ruling out fracture, but again, just because they score positive doesn't necessarily mean you have to obtain an x-ray. Is that bearing weight like right after the injury? Is that bearing weight in your exam room? What, what does that mean? Uh, it's both. Okay. I think uh, inability to bear weight either right after the injury or in your clinic. Okay. And um, yeah, generally sometimes I just have them stand on one leg to see if they're able to do that. Nice. I don't know if you guys have uh, sometimes challenge recruiting x-ray techs. Mm -hmm. Oh, tons of yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if this is relevant for this, but you know, sometimes we not be fortunate enough to have the ability to do an x-ray in clinic. Mm -hmm. And I think this is often um, just uh, what I use to help have that conversation with the patient. Like, hey, a lot of big study has looked at this. All these findings are negative. Your risk of having a fracture is extremely low mm -hmm. and no need for an x-ray today. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so in terms of x-rays, Three views is standard, uh, AP, Mortise, and lateral. Uh, the, the one to call out here is the Mortise view. Uh, basically, uh, the ankle is internally rotated slightly, and both um, the um, lateral and medial malleoli are lined up. And that gives us a better view of the ankle uh, Mortise. In terms of foot imaging, uh, similarly, AP, oblique, and lateral views. Emergent referrals for ankle injury. So these are the open or displaced fractures. What we talked about earlier with the tibial plafond or pylon fractures, those are high mechanism injuries. Same with the talus fracture, ankle dislocations, anything with neurovascular compromise. And then bimal or trimal fractures. So these are unstable fractures, um, can also potentially be uh, referred to the ER. Though depending on your local resources, if you're able to, um, uh, if the ankle is not dislocated, medial clear space is closed and you have good orthopedic follow-up um, promptly, like within like two or three days, uh, uh, these are potentially some patients that you can manage as an outpatient too. Would that be a reason where you might call an orthopedist from the urgent care before your patient goes home? This is what I've kind of commonly done for this and then also for Achilles tendon ruptures too. I'm sure every clinic is a little different, but we have a sort of a call panel and I would typically call the orthopedist and just say, this is a heads up, right? The patient has this, letting you know, sort of a courtesy call um, so that they, way they can arrange close follow-up. Yeah, this is a perfect case for that. Yeah. Other treatment that we can do in the urgent care, so anticipatory guidance for the patient, NSAIDs, acetaminophen, icing, elevating. I think uh, reviewed like the treatment. <laughs> yeah. You have a macro for this too, yeah, for yeah. all your musculoskeletal <laughs> injuries. Um, I think uh, one thing that is more unique to uh, ankle injuries is weight bearing status. Mm -hmm. So just to review this here, uh, essentially there are two, just two here that uh, are weight bearers tolerated, but uh, everything else we should make the patient non weight bearing, give them crutches. So low-grade ankle sprains, uh, one to two, those are, um, you, you basically put them in an air cast, even uh, ace wrap sometimes, and they can weight bear as tolerated. High-grade ankle sprains, non-weight bearing in a splint. Uh, same with high ankle sprains, so symptomatic injuries, uh, malleolar fractures. Um, for 
pseudo-Jones fractures, which we'll review later, these zone one proximal fifth metatarsal fractures, they're also weight bearers tolerated with a post-op shoe or boot. Um, the other metatarsal fracture, Jones fracture, it's non-weight bearing, Achilles tendon rupture, non-weight bearing.